way. Hello, 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 hello. This is a very empowering place to stand, isn't it? If you uh, attract attention to yourself, uh, the most natural progression is then judgment. Uh, and that judgment is based upon preconception. Uh, this is going to be a very different talk um, than I normally do, uh, mainly because it's a lot shorter. But I decided, I'm just going to make this very, very personal. Um, and I'm going to tell you what I've been up to, a little bit why I became so obsessed with this bizarre uh, art form. Um, and hopefully, by the end, your preconception of uh, what I do will we'll be more refined and hopefully you'll have some fun in the process. So, my name is Reap Swan and at a very young age I was labelled with this thing called ADD. Um, my dad told me I never knew how to relax. He still is trying to get me to relax. And this label, I feel, just defines my mental process. I constantly look for stimuli. I'm always looking for information. Uh, I never stand still. Um, and I always need that thing that just kind of keeps me feeling like I'm acquiring knowledge or bettering myself. Um, and it was uh, maybe about the age of 13, <clears throat> um, I realized all these instruments that my, my dad played, my dad plays many different instruments, um, I would dabble with for a couple months. I'd get to an okay standard and I get bored. And I always had this thing of becoming uh, fed up or bored and like moving on, something new. And all these different instruments I played, I realized I could then speak compositions. So even though maybe on a sonic level it was not the exact same physical, uh, the phys physical components, in my mind, I was acknowledging on a theoretical level all of the happenings within a composition. And this kind of this satisfied me. Uh, so I'd find in all the negative spaces of my life, I would be uh, talking music, talking ideas. Uh, no one ever really heard it. It was just a personal thing for me. I was like, this will keep me happy for these um, voids in which I loathe. <laughs> so, Naturally, after some time, speaking it wasn't enough, and the um, that, 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 that became <laughs> and the da 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 became <laughs> and I started to think and really listen to the how a sound was made. Why does a sound sound like this? And it still was just mine. It wasn't for anyone else. It was just negative spaces in my life. I was making these compositions. Uh, and more and more, uh, I started to perform them. And then one day, in the corner of my eye, this thing was flapping around and moving. And I turned my head, and it was my friend Ben, and he was dancing. <laughs> he was like, mate, that's wicked. And I realized I could make people dance by speaking music. And I was like, what, really? This is just, what are you talking about? This is my just weird little thing. You know, just, no one should take me doing that, would you? And, uh, and it was in that moment, I was, okay, mate, maybe there's something more. Maybe there's something um, that I can express with this. I can, I, can, I can speak something, and there is a, a level of enjoyment that comes out of it. But still nothing big, just, um, just a tiny, tiny little thing. Anyway. So we're going to skip forward four years, and I'm in Japan, Tokyo, talking about sound design, speaking about how to come up with new sounds, um, how, to, uh, how I design my sounds, and I was, I was really frustrated. If I'm honest, I was pissed off. Basically, my translator couldn't understand a word I was saying. I still had, I was a little bit younger, I was about 18, I was a little bit more like, Ugh. Um, and he just couldn't, couldn't get my sort of London slang. So I ended up with two translators <laughs> where my sort of London English was being transferred into Queen's English and then into Japanese. <laughs> which was a, a slightly frustrating process. I was trying to be as articulate as I could be. Um, so I was like, Do you know what, sod this. And there's these things I designed called sound trees. And what these sound trees are is like visual theory. 
And the visual theory is a visual way of representing how I design new sounds, how I create new sounds. And in a sort of spur of, of, a, of a, a moment of creativity, I realized I could actually express this idea without speaking. So there was about 500 people sitting in front of me, and I was like, do you know what, do you know what, just mate, leave it. Just stop, it's fine, I'll do it. So, this is what I call a sonic story, and it's called the journey of the wob. And what the wob is, is a sound I came up with that sounds like this. Very boring, okay. So, the journey of the wob. So, um, like I said, this is a very different talk for me, so this is just giving you a little bit of my background. Um, I like to speak a lot more, but I think it's very important that I say this. So, I became obsessed, I, I was constantly making sounds, um, it shaped my life uh, at a young age, the ADD I mentioned, um, something I'd like to say, attention deficit disorder, disorder, dis, disorder, that way of thinking, the constant need for information has shaped my life and I am proud of that. I am proud of the constant need for doing this stuff. Um, it's, 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 yeah, no, no, it's, <laughs> and it's something, it's a phrase that I think was designed when, when there was a variation um, 
um, to an established way of, of communicating information to children. So it was a disorder because the way you would pass on information, when there were these individuals that had a shorter attention span, it wasn't the normal variation, so it was defined as a disorder. It's, it's been the order of my life, and I'm very, very proud of it, and I think there's something very wrong with how that is communicated in that phrase specifically. Anyway, so a few years down the line, even more, I was performing, and a lady came up to me uh, by the name of Dr. Sophie Scott. And she works for the UCL. Um, and she said one of the strangest things um, that I think I've ever heard uttered by a woman, and I've heard some bizarre, bizarre phrases. And she was like, I want your brain. And I was like, what? Um, and it turns out she's uh, a leading neurologist. And to cut a long story short, I was part of a study where I had my brain scanned whilst I beatbox. And the purpose of this study, uh, forget beatboxing, it's just all of you human beings out there, what changes in your mind when you improve? When you repeat an action and you keep doing something, there are subconscious functions that are going, they really like to do that, don't they? Like, they keep doing it. We should, we, should, we should sort, we should make it easier for them. And basically things happen in your subconscious that allows you to be more fluid in your actions. So, um, for example, she made the example, she wanted a ballerina, she wanted someone to come uh, and dance, but you can't do that in an MRI scanner, where with me, as much as it's really difficult because I always move, I had to do this, and she could get access to my mind whilst I was performing, which gave an insight, uh, amongst with, uh, I think there was another um, uh, a number of other vocal experts, in what happens in someone that has rehearsed and practiced for literally tens of thousands of hours relative to someone who had, had just started. So, what they found was someone who just started, in the mind, there were many things active. There was, the, there was also all kinds of activity because your subconscious, your mind, is searching for a process. It's trying to find an ideal to do what you want. And when I actually looked at the scan, because on mine, and someone that is an expert, that process has been refined. So there's actually less spread out activity, but it's localized at a hyperactive level. But visually, when you look at it, there's like less happening. I was like, what the hell? That guy's just started and there's like things happening everywhere. That's, that's, that's just, what? Um, and I was a little bit jealous. But what they found, and what it suggests, is that when you practice something again and again, you become fluent in that skill. And the best example is language. So, if I am learning French and I'm not fluent yet, my phrasing is stuttered, it's stammered. So, I have to think about what I want to say, I have to go in the little file of my mind and go, okay, that's what I'm trying to say. And then I go, okay, there you go. But when I'm speaking to you now, this is completely unplanned, but my intention and what I'm trying to say is completely articulate and intentional. And it's a very strange thing when you acknowledge it. And what I took from that study is that in any creative process or when you're trying to learn a skill, that is what you're trying to get to. You're trying to get to that point that your musical, creative, um, love, <laughs> uh, expression is being not held back by a varied process where your mind is not sure what to do. And they came up with this uh, figure, um, and I don't know how accurate it actually is because I think it's very hard to find these things, but they said it's 10,000 hours before uh, a mental process becomes refined. So, I think about beatboxing quite a lot, as you can tell. Uh, and I would like to say and finish uh, with a performance. Would you like to hear? But before we do that, I would like some more energy, please. Make some noise! And before that happens, lemons, I'd like to do something funny. On three, on three, I want everyone to go, ah! In a very quick, no, wait for it. As quickly as you can, as tiny as you can. Let's have a little practice. One, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> okay, now this is gonna be the really loud one and then I, I, will, I shall do the performance. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay.